the, the FUD explosion. You know, there's so much FUD kicking off. Um, we've had banks collapsing in the US. That's, uh, how, how do we put this? I don't know. Does anybody know that whole side of things? Like I mentioned to Cheese that I wasn't really fully aware of what's going on there with all the banks, the runs on the banks and the collapses and the drama. Um, does anybody want to tentatively explore that? I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that the deregulation that um, ends up occurring uh, due to pressure from lobbyists and whatnot um, causes there to be not enough oversight of the banks, and so they do stuff they shouldn't do, and then they fail. That's my understanding. Yes, she yeah. might have a different. I don't know. I don't, I haven't looked, all I know is it's like one of the top 16 uh, banks in the world and it's not a great thing. I haven't looked into it any more than that. <clears throat> yeah, some people are saying A plus B equals Z. Um, who's that, Shelter, is it? Sorry, I dropped my phone, but um, I did want to chime in. So I've seen yeah. a couple things about it. Um, and it, uh, it's, Seems like one one possibility could be um, that large banks, with what uh, Shacklin said about uh, deregulation, larger banks are going to be able to consolidate their power and um, put some smaller banks out of business. Um, and that I think there's a possibly it could just be how the market will work, but strategy strategically, um, uh, it, it could be better for Wall Street, kind of in juxtaposition to um, banks that might be um, or have historically loaned money for uh, people to use for crypto um, and other currency investing, foreign investing and um, other things. So these certain investment firms and in, um, uh, what they call online banks or, or even crypto friendly banks are, are sort of being attacked in a way like strategically to, to harm them or put them out of business. That's one, one major theory um, I've seen on some YouTube videos that, uh, you know, experts in finance and economics are, are talking about. So it's like a targeted, coordinated attack almost. Yeah, I mean, it. yeah, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily say it's like a, like a, like a major sinister thing, but it's more or less like just an opportunity, um, seeing where things are with, with, um, interest rates and the economics of, of everything, I, I think the larger banks are seeing an opportunity to try to you know, seize more funds and assets. Um, and if they can put some smaller, but middle, really middle-sized banks out of business in Silicon Valley, um, they're going to get some of the shares of what they had. And I think mm. that it's a move to do that. Cool, Alrighty, Thank you very much for that, Shelter. It looks like you've got a bit of FUD kicking on in the background yourself. It's kids. <laughs> Do, I do. <laughs> um, so what, why are we talking about this? Well, the reason we're talking about this is some people have said, well, A plus B equals D, you know, because there's all of this, you know, macroeconomic FUD kicking off with banks and that, well, then this, this is extremely worrying for what's going to happen in Upland. Um, is that true? I don't know, possibly. But it kind of brings up an important point. Now, Cheese and I, we've gone backwards and forwards on this for ages we, we kind of we have some crossover but we're definitely from we look at this from different a uh, different perspective as well you know is upland a game is it an investment platform is it neither is it both um i don't know cheese you kind of take this from a more of an investment side where i'm pure like which is weird because i'm not a gamer yet this is fully a game for me well <clears throat> it's a it's for me, it's gambling. But when you gamble, you put money in, you're investing whatever you decide to gamble. It's less of an invest. It's it's both to me. So I wouldn't treat it like a stock exchange or a bank. I would treat it as a fun time I do with my extra funds that I'm, I'm willing to lose. So do I consider it investing? Sure. But I also consider it a game where it is if I let I lost my investment, it wouldn't kill me. Yeah, and that's the important point. And I think a lot of the the FUD and the drama that does get kicked off, um, 
I, th- I think people are just way overexposed. They haven't taken the base principle of don't invest more than you're willing to lose. Yeah, it's new. It's a new thing that's coming out. It is, it's a gamble. It's like, like when, when everyone invested in Google, that was a gamble. Like you don't know what's going to make it. You don't know what's not, yeah. you know, in life you have, you have, you win some, you lose some, you don't know what's going to, what's going to make it or not. Um, it's not going to help your investment win if you're just going to completely talk shit about it 24 seven. Um mm-hmm which is stupid <laughs> but anyway i digress because i get too emotional on that yeah it's we always say don't invest more than you're willing to lose but seriously people it's it's very easy to say but seriously um if you are overexposed or overextended you should definitely start working on fixing that asap um this is upland is well it started off as a blockchain game in better it was a bit of fun, bit quirky. You know, it has evolved, adapted, expanded. You know, is it a digital investment platform? Whatever you want to call it. But you got to keep in mind, this is cutting edge technology. You know, it is at its foundation. It's it's at least a gamified Web3 platform, however you want to further define it from that. But there's no guarantees here. Um, you could wake up and go to turn on Upland and it's gone, you know, for whatever reason. Um, it could be, you know, there's speculation that maybe if Upland had a bank with one of those banks, they're going to lose all of their funds. Who knows? There's there's Animoca invested in Upland. There's so many different things that are out of our knowledge base, out of our control. But you just need to understand that you could wake up and everything's gone. The whole lot. Not to come back ever again. You know? If, if that... If that happens to you and you would face any sort of in real life financial stress, then you're overexposed. You need to sort that out because that's not a good place to, to, to be in, you know? Um, I guess that sounds strange coming from somebody like my net worth in the game is a, over 150 million UPEX. Um, have I put that much money in? Hell no. I'm a kindergarten teacher. Hell no, I haven't put that much money in. If I pulled the equivalent Australian dollars amount out, that would be life-changing money. But that's not what I'm personally in this for. That's not what I do. Um, I, I have said maybe sometime in the future that that would be cool to do. But for me, this is very much a community-based, you know, this is my entertainment. You know, when I, when I want to wind down from the stress of the day, well, I get engaged in the drama within the community and have fun like that. We do these, you know, I do these shows with Cheese and everybody else that jumps in. It's a bit of fun. If I woke up and Upland was gone, it's all done and dusted, it wouldn't impact on me financially at all. I I would be extremely disappointed. I would consider it a major lost opportunity, but I'm not going to be tearing my hair out and thinking, oh, crap, how the hell am I going to explain this to my wife and kids? Yeah. So I don't know. Let me just catch up on chat. If anybody else wants to chime in with their um, biased opinions, not financial advice, please do so. Because I just see so many people just, and cheese is right. It does cheese's head in. People go on these wild rants. You're literally trying to destroy the investment that you're trying to hold on to. Like, what the fuck, people? And they're saying it's for the good of the game. It's like, I, and no, it's for attention to feed your ego. <laughs> It's stupid. It's stupid. It is stupid. It's stupid. And, and those same people yeah. say that this is not an investment and that you're silly if you think of it as an investment. But yeah. that is silly because, I mean, probably all of us have put some amount of money into the game, including them, mm. and we spend a lot of our time on the game. That is an investment. You're investing yourself, you're investing your time, you have invested money. I mean, I don't know how they want to define an investment, but yeah, you're investing yourself and you're investing yourself not only with your money and your time, but with your energy to bitch about the thing you're investing in. That's stupid. And if it's such an investment for them, like if they say it's not an investment, then why are they spending so much of their time fudding about it? Why are they investing themselves? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Time, right? For me, time is important. Yeah, oh. it's, 
I, I think some people are like, you know, it's like they're almost in an abusive relationship or something and they just can't let go, like move on. Yeah, I don't, I don't get it, but it's very annoying to see. Um, yeah. I think everyone might have seen my post on Twitter that said, please stop, yeah. right? I, I love Upland and I'm extremely active in Upland. And for whatever reason, your post shows up in my husband's Twitter feed. Mm, I did see that. And, and so he is wondering, ooh, look at this. I heard about Upland. You know, and it's like, that means that you're not just complaining to Upland. You're complaining to people that don't play Upland. They are, they're hearing about Upland from you and they don't play it. Yeah, you, you're literally making your prophecies come true to your own detriment. Right. <laughs> Utterly bizarre. Yeah. It, it's uh, akin to, if you don't mind me chiming in again, it's like a bank run, like creating the bank run hype and the feeling that just has more people getting nervous and scared. And there's some people that can constitutionally stick with something like Upland as a game or even as an investment and say, you know what, I'm going to ride this out. There's a, a, a bear market all over the world. I think some of my money being here is a risk, but certainly could be a way to you know, not financial advice, like just keep some money in something that could in 18 months, if the game doesn't go away or whatever, have a positive return. And that's, we are gambling. If we're, if we're playing the game for fun and all that, that's fine. But I think to then try to like coerce anyone else to go get into another project or uh, leave Upland or anything like that, especially people who've been building nodes and working together and putting a lot of time and energy and investment and promises, Yes. toward other people to then like sort of poo poo it away just because you're upset about something that's not really met your expectations yet is it that is yeah it's angry and i relate to you guys on that and i think that it's foolish it's it's a bank run mentality creating the problem that we fear yeah, pe people are trying to burn down their own house just to say ha ha i told you so yeah <laughs> like, that's right so a few points Almost in hoping for the fire trucks to never show up too which is <laughs> that's scary yeah. it's bizarre um miss and chatter said web3 is bringing different types of investments that we are not used to see so that that is why in his opinion it's hard to give upland a label yeah absolutely uh, bc for fun has said cutting edge and unfounded te territory it's all good um oh yes i'll follow up on that Masita. what else have i missed uh kinda has said hey everyone also i got to say is i'm lucky that for what money i've put in i've already had more fun with this game i think it's a new type of game in fact uh the level of community and the projects that i've seen plus i make about two dollars a day moving on up yeah so some people put out these videos about you know the roi and this that and the other thing other people have said you know you should park your money in upland because you get better than bank dividends back like just play within your means don't 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 overextend yourself. Don't FOMO into stuff. Um, you cannot compare yourself to other people. Um, I see a lot of people get in trouble because they try to compare themselves to other people's accounts, um, even taking mine as an example. Like when I first started playing Upland in January, whenever it was, 2020? I don't remember. Uh, I think it was 2020. I looked around in the the app and there was people that already had accounts that were like 1 million UPEX worth or 5 million UPEX worth. And I just couldn't get my head around that they'd spent so much money. Um, and then, yeah, fast forward. And then my account is where it is. You, you can't join the game now and say, oh, that's not fair. Look what Ben 68's done or anything like that. You, the hours and hours and hours over years and years, you, you can't put a price on that. Um, Elijah, did you want to chime in? Because I know you're very much from the other end of the spectrum. <laughs> what up, everybody? What's going on? I love on? that laugh. Yeah. <laughs> <Can we do? laughs> yeah, I I you know, I've been dealing with Upland for over, you know, over a year now. And and uh I just don't look at it as a game. Um, you know, yeah. it's more of a uh a, a platform, a digital assets management platform you know, somewhere for me to manage these digital assets. Spark is a, is a, you know, a digital asset. You can get cash with it or Opix. You can make things move with it. So 
um, Upland is that that uh, asset management system that I use. But no, nah, it, it's gamified. I definitely say it's gamified, but I wouldn't call it a game. Yeah, it's it's a and a lot of people share that opinion, and you t- it's totally fine to have that, and we fully respect that. I think um, the difference is that for you, I would imagine this is a very high risk kind of investment, but you're not putting all your eggs in this basket. This would be part of a very diversified portfolio or whatever. I'm assuming. Yeah, I look at Upland like um, like a like a business, like a, you know, like if you were to get into any sort of business venture, um, you don't put all your eggs into that business venture, but you do uh, lean on the throttle depending on how you want it to move. And looking at Upland, um, having a meta venture, wanting to have an NFT gallery, just kind of getting into that digital space of um trying to sell nfts mint them and things like that that's a business you know you have to take you have to approach it like like a business yeah and you we've mentioned this multiple times that elijah is a prime example of somebody who's come into the game you know recently uh, reasonably recently and has you know made his own projects done his own thing and just absolutely worked his ass off and you know obviously he's starting to reap the rewards for that now and assuming that everything continues to play out into the future as well. So yes, love what you're doing, mate. All right, Chase, did you want to say anything on that to wrap no, that up? No, I think that was a good finisher right there. Yeah, I'll just uh, go back to Zoe's point that she mentioned in chat a while ago. She said she wished that there was a sellout channel within Upland. Now there has been talk, Upland did talk ages and ages and ages ago about there being a, a kind of an automated buyout um, feature of the game. Like we know that if you get wildly drunk one night, you can press the delete my account button. Well, <laughs> there has been talk that there will be some kind of function where you can sell out your account. Um, yeah, that would be ideal because these people that just want to drag on, like it's not healthy for them to, you know, they want to get their funds out. They can't get them out. They can't move on. I, it must be a, you know, to take the the opposite look into things, to play devil's advocate, it must be a horrible feeling. Like if you've lost all faith in Upland, you hate what they've got to offer and you just want to get the hell out. But it's a tough grind to do so. Um, so, yeah, ho- hopefully that kind of functionality comes sooner rather than later because it, that then feeds on like what Shaq, Shaq said, like all of the drama that kicks off on Twitter and it just kind of works to poison the entire the entire space. So. Hopefully sooner rather than later that gets sorted out. But thanks um, everybody who jumped in with their biased opinions. And of course, the caveat is always, none of this is financial advice. Do your own research, yada, yada, yada. But please, yes, if you do feel like that you are overexposed, then don't just fud yourself away. Try to do something about it. And yeah, don't, (laughs) Jesus, don't bloody shit on your own investment. If, If it is an investment, why the hell would you spend all your time shitting on it? Yeah. It's well, I a, think it's I think it's a narcissistic thing to be quite fair. It's 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 uh, they're they're getting attention. You know, it's it's a uh, it's a way of grabbing attention even though it's negative. Yeah. It's provoking. Like people like that they like to provoke <clears throat> and if you do reply, you'll be met with like 8 to 10 reply responses from them, which is which yeah. is silly. That's why I went toe to toe with one of them. Because he posted, like, I, usually I ignore them because I feel like, you know, live and let live. People are free to do whatever they want. You know, sometimes uh, FUD is good, yada, yada. But when you're putting a picture that has nothing to do with something else and saying that it does, then I have to step in. Yeah, absolutely. And, and we, I we, did. <laughs> we, yes. We covered this on the morning tree show, like critical feedback is important it depends on the way you deliver it fud is not the way to deliver you know constructive yeah. critical feedback 